Hello, everybody. Today I have with me one of the finest wildlife filmmakers in India and world, Nalla Muttu. Nalla Muttu has won four national awards and several international awards. His films can be seen on NGC, Animal Planet, Discovery Channels. Today we'll talk to him and find out what wildlife film is all about. Welcome, Nalla. Yes, Ajay. Hi. All good. First question I want to ask you is, tell me a little bit about your early life, how you became a filmmaker, and what made you inspired to get into wildlife filmmaking? Yeah, I'm, I'm basically from Film Institute Chennai. I specialize in cinematography. It's a three years course uh, after plus two. I mean, there is one in Pune, one in Chennai. I'm from Chennai because uh, I'm, since I'm, since I'm from Chennai. I got an admission here, so I completed that. So after that, I really wanted to go to film industry. Basically, my idea is to get into cinema and do something on cinema, on cinematography. So at that time, my father insisted me to go to government, central government job. So those days, you no, know, I mean, there are very few opportunities to work in cinema. So I decided to join an Indian space research worked for a few years, few years. Then I decided to you know, go to Delhi because those days, you know, television was you know, the first time. You know, we had only two version. So the private channels started getting into our country. They started, new channels started coming in. We decided to do something in television because cinema was too tough to do, you know, work in cinema. There are very few people are, no engaging institute people there's a lot of lot of problems, a lot of politics and stuff. So I thought might as well do something in television, then we'll try to do something in cinema. So opportunity was in Delhi. So join in Delhi as a, as a, again as a cameraman in films division. Because I mean again it's a central government job. Then I thought there was no there was nothing creatively happening in government job. So I decided to quit the government job, started working seriously on television. So that was a that was a first step which we, we, we I started working in television. So that time, I think in 1991, we got an opportunity to do a series on the environment. This environment series called Living on the Edge. So we did some 52 part series. That was the first step into wildlife and environment and wildlife. In that, there's a mix of wildlife and mix of environment. A lot of issue based, lot of no, lot of lot of issue based uh, magazine for, magazine format. So even though we are not, we got a prime time slot in Doordarshan, there was no hardly any viewership. So I just we put a lot of blood into this. There was no viewership because we were doing you no know, what do you call that purely a conservation based, educational based. You know, started talking about environment and pollution. There was no drama. There's no. There's no story. I mean, when it, I mean, when it was commissioned by do do that, it didn't do, do well. It, uh, it managed to get some awards and you no know, producers and ourselves. We were you know, getting you no know, making money. So I just thought, you know, this is not working. But you put too much effort and hard work. So that was a turning point. I decided to work on serious documentaries. So those days, a lot of international crew used to come to Delhi. So we started working for them as a cinematographer and documentary. So mainly I started concentrating on wildlife-based documentaries since I was doing in environment and wildlife. And apart from that, when we were working in Indian space research also, I used to do high-speed cinematography. So those days we used to do you know, film birds and tele uh, pelicans and takeoff and landing and you know, try to do something on, you know, to give a technical support and and we, we used to spend two years, three years to you know, document this rocket manufacturing and preparation and test and stuff till we launch. So we, I was experienced uh, you know, in uh, documenting stuff you know, for you no know, follow one particular you no know, particular rocket manufacturing. So we used to document stuff. So that really helped her to do you know, those sort of these sort of documentaries, which uh, international crew used to come to India. So. So that is, you know, these all the two, three, you know, situations made me to start working in environment and wildlife. 
then I used to work for, you know, six, seven years to, as a freelancer in documentaries and wildlife and stuff. You also made two feature films. Yeah, those days I used to work. Whenever I get a chance, I used to work as an assistant to feature film and I also produced some feature films. I also shot some feature films because mainly my idea is to do something on feature. But those days were very difficult because nowadays things are different. So I was balancing it out, you know, do something in drama and, you know, what do you call that, feature and feature length films and I did a feature, the first uh, feature, I mean, on those days we were shooting in beta and digi beta, there was no high definition camera. So then the digital thing started coming, I start, we started working on digital cameras. So people, uh, I mean, abroad, they've already started working on high definition, so they should bring cameras from abroad, which I shoot in HD and they take the camera back, we, there's no cameras in our country. And I got an opportunity to work in high definition feature film also. So, I mean, like that, we, I mean, I was trying to do something new always. And uh, I mean, and, and television is also growing up, no? I mean, was, they're also trying new, new formats. Like, and we did first reality show, we did first travel show, we did first, of, you know, of the beaten shows. No, it's all at first because there was a good uh, opportunity I managed to do it. But my main, main focus was documentaries, high-end documentaries follow one particular subject and follow one particular character the human or no so that is that really helped us help me to you know to you know, become to 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 shoot sequences on my own so sometimes what happens the crew comes comes from there i work for 10 15 days and i go back they ask me to do some follow up i shoot and send it to them then they ask me to do one particular segment so you now i do the segment and send it to them they ask me to do one ep so it just it just you know i mean it was keep on going on and off so that really helped and I decided one day, okay, instead of doing working for others, I might as well do something on my own. So that's the first initiative I started doing a wildlife documentary on my own. So it started. Your, uh, your first film was Tiger Queen, which was based on one of the most famous tiger in Run from War called Machli. How, how did you go about that? How long did you spend? And uh, what was your, uh, how did you get inspired to do this film first? Tell me a little bit about that. Before this Tiger Queen, I, I did a lot of work as a freelance cameraman as a tiger, you know, follow tigers for WWF and WWF International. You know, I mean, for National Geography as a freelance cameraman. For even, you know, what do you call independent crew who come from abroad. So my, so I now, and mainly they, I mean, there's a lot of demand in tigers, tiger films in abroad. So I just thought, let's, you know, since I decided to do something on my own, I managed to get a co-producer. So we decided to follow this uh, Machli, and she was very famous at that time. BBC used to make films on Machli. They, they, they did two films, and it was doing very well. And uh, I mean, I mean, these tigers are getting popular, and a lot of tourists started coming to see these tigers. There's a big demand on tigers, tiger films. So I, did, I just thought, you no, know, since we are investing our own money, you know, it's very difficult to, as an Indian, you know, produce and sell it. You know? I mean, it's very difficult to get commissioning from international producers, international channels. So mm -hmm. the only way to do is shoot, because I had a lot of experience working for international crew. Only thing I thought, might as well put together a film, a complete story and go and pitch it. So that was an idea. It was a big risk, even though... I mean, we spent one, one and a half years to follow this uh, character. And at that time, Machli was almost, uh, she, had a, she had a lost litter and her three daughters were trying to, you know, get her territory from the mother, from Machli. So I thought, okay, it's the right opportunity to follow it. I mean, there is a potent, uh, potential for a great story because Machli got her territory from her mother. She fought with the mother, she managed to get the territory. And this is again a challenge for her, for her to hold this territory. And she, she also had three daughters. So I just thought there is a back history of Machli, which BBC did it. So I just thought, well, let's follow this and at least get some story. So that's how, the way I followed how, it. And how long did you spend uh, making this? It was something around a year, year and a half. I mean, uh, there was a pre-separation pre part we managed. We, uh, did something before the separation. After that uh, separation, also we did. So it was like then, in, see, if you see that film, the whole idea of doing the film is there's a great potential to tell a story. It, there's a lot of drama. There is there is a there is a fight between you no know, um, 
sisters and you know talking, one dominant city. Yeah, talk, yeah. Talking about drama, I notice uh, in your films you bring in uh, a bit of fictional kind of drama in your films. I've seen. You know, you create a lot of kind of drama. So what what is that? It's an approach of special approach of yours to create drama. It's not. Uh, I mean, all my stories are I, very true because we just uh, we don't make any stories. All are true stories. But instead of, uh, I mean, instead of, uh, I, I mean, talking heads, I try to tell a story through these characters and visuals because, because I'm a cameraman. I try to, you know, get those visuals as a, I mean, play around with the sequence and try to put through the sequence and try to tell a story. That's one thing because talking heads are boring. We had a very bad experience earlier, so I just thought that that's one thing. And again, I'm I just wanted to add some cinema into this documentaries, and that's that's first thing. So that really works because uh, people wants to see the story. People wants to see a sort of a you no know, you no know, sequencing of you no know, these characters and capturing this character in their own you know in their own way. And uh, it's 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 a con it's a constant follow up. I mean, it's not that you know, the story story happens every day. The story changes, but uh, we just follow it till we get a you know good beginning and middle and end, and without manipulating with some other you no know, story. It's all, it's all actual stories. You know? That's what you can see all my films. Whether it's Tiger, you, Queen you Tiger made a Star. you made a follow up film called uh, uh, the most famous tiger in the world, Machli. Uh, which yeah. was which won the national award, yeah. and I find you spent so much time shooting Machli. Probably it was uh, Bessini that you were actually present when Machli uh, had its last breath and passed away. You actually shot that, which is a very very rare thing to do. Yeah, but see, once it, after my first film, the three daughters we got, had a great story. There was a good response. We went and pitched it to National Geography. They bought it. So then they thought, okay, there is there is a potential for a tiger story. We took a, I took then again I, I put my own savings. I started following one of her doctor a daughter. They shifted to Sariska, and uh, and followed that. I got a great story. So they again third daughter. I mean, I started following all the three daughters of Machli. So in that meantime, Machli is also slowly, you know, I mean, I mean, following her. Whenever I get time, I just go and follow Machli you actually, and her daughter. You actually got the shot of it having its last breath, isn't it? Yeah, because it's a religiously we traveled, we just followed uh, Machli for seven to eight years. So that's one reason we managed to get that death because that sequence, because we know that because everyone. Those days, they do films only from you know when this cubs are when the tigers are from only only these cubs are small, no and no one has tried to make a film on a on a tiger when, from prime to death. Very really hardly anyone followed it. So I thought might as well follow Machli from prime to death. So this is the first film I can say. I mean maybe I don't know. I mean we religiously followed a famous character from prime to death. So that's one thing which is completely got never been never never been seen before sort of footage, and also we had a great back end story to tell a story. So these all together, you know, there was a great film. You no, know? now otherwise normally people spend some twenty twenty one days or two months and try to make film. My films always have spent minimum two years to get a story. It's just like, I mean, I mean, we shoot mm -hmm. something around two hundred two hundred and fifty days of uh, filming. So that's one reason you get great stories. Now tell me, uh, a lot of uh, common person, you know, students, common person, uh, we end up watching shootings, you know, film shootings, other kind of shootings. But there's always this mystery about wildlife filmmaking. You know, because obviously, you know, your wildlife filmmaking is a bit hidden from the normal audience. So we actually don't know how a cameraman goes in, how he shoots, how he gets his footage. Tell me a little bit about this process of shooting of wildlife. How do you do it? See, in our country, the situation is different when compared to Africa and other places because we have a lot of restrictions, mainly in tiger national national parks, tiger reserves, because we are allowed to shoot only from only in the tourism zones, and all my films are shot, you know, in front of the tourists. Sometimes 20, 20 gypsies, sometimes thirty gypsies. 
in the tourism safari timing. You know, in India, they, you won't get any special timings for filming, apart from few parks, but most of the parks, you have to stick to the timing of safari timing with a tourist. That's a restriction which you need to mentally prepare to start. I mean, if you want to start any character you want to wildlife film in India, that is one thing. I'm talking about tigers. Second thing is you are not allowed to go off track. You have to stick to the track, which is, again, it's difficult for filmmaking. Third is you, filming permission is one thing which you need to be mentally prepared to pay for it. It's something around, varies from 15 to 20, 25,000 rupees a day, which is not for the whole day, only from morning to evening. And you can use only one camera if you're using another camera, it will become second camera unit, it will become, no, you may end up paying twice its uh, filming fee charges. So these are all the restrictions. And that is, that's the way all the film has been shot. So you have one camera, one, I mean, cameramen hardly take assistance because you are not allowed to get down from the Jeep. You will be sitting from the Jeep. And there's, I mean, that's, that's the reason we won't take any assistance. Only one driver, maybe one guide. And because too many people know they'll be wobbling, they'll be shake. So you need to have, you know, take a steady shot. So, so that's why, you know, that's the reason we, I got used with myself to alone everything. Uh, it's, it's, it's one man because again, I kind of a film which I make, I follow the character. So I don't need a second, I don't need a director to direct me because I myself is a director cameraman. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get the sequence and trying to put together the stories happening. You no, know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm experienced, you know, more than 10, 15 years of following, making sequence on my own. So this all happens. It's all you, you, you plan a shot at that particular situation. You try to work out the sequence. You try to, you know, you'll be, you'll be having all your stories in your mind, maybe two to three story different lines and try to work out. Because you take a call once you see the tiger. The thing is, you are restricted to shoot from these conditions. You no, know? that's one limitation. The tiger, sometimes you may not get the tiger. Right? I mean, in my, in my experience yeah. of whatever, 10, 15 years, there are nine, 10 days. I mean, we hardly get a chance to see a tiger. But again, you keep going back and forth, you come back and that's the way because you, I mean, because that's the way it is. Because otherwise, it's very easy to, there are two ways of making films in wildlife. One is documenting, just, just document whatever you get, put together, put a music, put a voiceover. Or if there's no story, you get a famous anchor person or a famous voiceover to do it. So you tell a story, you tell, you, you just try to you know what you call it, like an audio visual sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. That is one way. Second thing is, second way is you follow a character with till, till you get a great story. So obviously people like to see this sort of a story. It's got a lot of drama in this, you know, it, it got, it got like, it's more or less like making a film, no? Because the only thing is the character is not in our own control. The stories are not in our own control. It's, it's unscripted. So, I mean, these sort of a challenges, that's, that's completely a different format of making it. It, it needs a lot, of money, a lot of time. It needs, you need to have a, what you call, guts what, to what about, spend that uh, much money. What about the equipment, special equipment you use for wildlife yeah. filmmaking? Yeah, because see, since we, we cater for international broadcast, there are some specifications, which is our equipment, we use very high-end, uh, what do you call that? Now I'm using 4K. Those days I used to HD and 2K and you know, sort of a different format, but all are very high end because uh, that's the specifications, which is an expensive thing. You won't, it's very hardly, you, you can hire, uh, get it, uh, get these lenses on hire. So these lenses and cameras, we try our level best to you know, buy it on our own and we invest money on our own money. And uh, that's where it is because it's, see these sort of a limitations, these all the challenges are there. So are which is very expensive. You? What about things like night shoots and all? Are you allowed to do? No, that? we are not. We are not. We are not allowed to shoot night in our country because uh, your permission is only sunrise to sunset. In Africa and other places, maybe, and we are allowed to. Maybe we are allowed to use some remote cameras, provided if you are having if you are having a tie with scientists and scientific organizations. So we have a lot of restrictions. There are. I mean, even if you do, and it's like there are. I mean, there are some films I saw it. I don't know how they managed it because uh, legally speaking you are not allowed to shoot, use any night cameras. 
What about abroad? In uh, abroad parks, are you abroad, allowed? Abroad, abroad things are different. Abroad is different, and uh, see, you know, I mean, there's a lot of freedom, and in terms of forest, also it's open, and uh, and that's a completely different. You hardly get to see a character-driven film in abroad because you you end up getting getting compilation of chase and kill and sort of that. It's like you know. Very, those sort of images. Because there are some good films, but apart from that, it is easier in abroad. I never shot in abroad because I somehow I focus only on tiger. What about the free fee structures in the park? Do you you have daily fees to pay? Yeah, daily fees is something years? around fifteen to twenty thousand rupees a day. Because, for example, if it is a two hundred days, just imagine how much. Mm. Under days, it is twenty lakhs. So it is, talking, it is talking, talking about that, what about the economics of wildlife filmmaking? Like you are saying, fifteen thousand per day, which means yeah, it is, you, uh, it, you spend so much time, so much money, and how does it work? How do you sell the film? How does it work? It is, it is complicated. It's one way. It's a gamble. Everyone say everyone thinks wildlife filmmaking has got a lot of money. I won't agree that. If there is a lot of money, I mean, I mean, in India, there are hardly two to three, two or three wildlife filmmakers. There is, you know, any. I mean, if there is a money, you know, no, in India, no, there will be some fifty, sixty filmmakers will be making films. <laughs> hardly any filmmakers. Yeah. So that itself very clearly shows there is no money. I'm not telling it's it's not a loss. If you if you get a great story, obviously, there is you can sell it. So again, depends on the kind of a story, effort, and uh, you know. I mean, it's it's all it's all, it's again. You need that passion to spend that much time, slog yourself, and you have to. You are ready to challenge this international uh, on your own. You have to challenge the international market, and mm. you will. You, you. I mean, all my films. No one commissions uh, these films in India. No channel will commission to hardly they commission to Indians. I don't know why. And you see all these big films who comes. even worldwide famous films you can hardly see india there indian indian animal there i mean mostly it's been africa and other places i don't want to name it any big films of all these emmy award films you hardly see you no know, tiger in india maybe 5 minutes 2 minutes that clearly shows the kind of limitations uh, which is difficult for them to you know film in india it's easy that so that's 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 one one thing which i always say i always expect something in in those films which get emmy awards you know maybe some two sequences or one chase or maybe a tense you no know, maybe 10 5 10 minute sequences so that's one thing so it's a challenge uh, it is but if you got a good story of this as a as a, a cameraman director to be a wildlife cameraman what is the spare, what is the different skill you need see now what is storytelling yet yeah? earlier those days are different those days even if you get a behavior you can sell it you know now even if you get a behavior i don't think there is any buyer those days even if you get a good clip footage you can sell it now you get footage everywhere i mean those days uh, if it is a 10 tourists maybe a one photographer or two or one filmmaker or two photograph now out of 10 nine are filmmakers and nine are photographers so the demand of you i mean now the after the dslr revolution everyone is uh, photographers and filmmakers and everyone wants to get this content but it, that's not a competition because what i'm telling is there is no use for those footage i mean those days are different even if you get one clip of someone mating sequence mean those days they used to you no know, talk big now you just see everyone will be maybe a three out of five will be having mating sequence what i want to say is you need to have a never been seen before content or first time sort of a content or a great story telling otherwise you can't sell it or you need you need to follow this characters and till we get a completely different story i mean generally speaking i always say this i mean every animal most of the animals generally they do the same thing what normally they do you no know, even tiger they walk mate sit in the water kill drag and play with the cubs But you also you see, made a film shooting in Western Ghats, yeah, which was not on tiger. It's not a tiger. No one knows about it because there's no tiger in that. That's one one thing. But it's a great film. We spend a lot of time on it. We spend 
I think more than a year we just spent because that is all that is commissioned by someone because I wanted some money. I just thought I'll work. Because what I do is I work films like this, get some money, and try to invest that money into my films. My films are completely self-financed. I don't. No one has come. No one is not commissioned by any has channel. It, has it? Has it happened to you that uh, you made some films, spent a lot of money, and didn't get sell? Does that didn't get? Uh, yeah, there are. There are. There are. Yeah? Yeah, there, there are there are there, yeah there are some two three species. I have followed more than six months. There's no bias. I uh, spent something around a year to follow a series of film on Sarah's Crane. I got outstanding footage, which is no bias. I still working on a film on Slender Loris. There's no bias. There's a film on Leopard, which I'm still working on. I spent six seven months. There's no bias. There are great stories. There's no bias because it's I don't know. So a lot of so your money, gets, lot of your money gets stuck there. No, apart from apart from this, for example, recently I started following a mother with four cups. Exactly after a month and month and half, she lost one cup. So I thought, let me do one film on four cups. So I still I managed to follow. I just thought, okay, let's follow with three cups. No, I was hoping that I'll get a story. Then Corona has come. Now, now they've closed the park. I'm sitting at home. I lost all my money. Something around three, four months of my work. Now I lost the continuity. So next next month is going to be my monsoon. I lose the continuity. Yeah. I lost some money. So these risks are always there. And what, I, what I'm telling is, you cannot. People say, no, you got three months of footage. I'm telling you, you can't do anything with this footage. I'm ready to sell this footage to any buyers. We all start with 4K, in completely 4K with slow motions, and mother and cubs playing around and you no know, everything, whatever outstanding visuals. There's no buyer. There won't be. I, I don't think I can sell it. It's a huge loss of something around lakh, some lot of money, and something around 60, 70 days of slogging. So this risk, it's a passion. India is doing pretty well in the population of tiger going up. So. Uh, how how good is it doing see increase in numbers of tigers is i don't i'm not a i'm not a conservationist i mm. i don't talk about policies and stuff as a filmmaker i always try to stick with stories but if you ask me as a layman layman town there are more tigers outside national park than inside inside, inside national park and particularly mm. some of the park which i can say there's no space in our country All the most of the, all the tigers are suffering. The, park, the tigers which are outside the parks are suffering. So there is no point of you no, know, we jumping around saying that we got you know 2,500, we got 3,000, we got whatever. I don't think we need more tiger. I think as long as we manage the tigers which we have, that what itself about, is more than enough. What about uh, what about uh, you know, things like poaching and all? Is that poaching better? and all is. It is. It is. It is controlled. I think so because, see, thing is, I mean, I deal only with the tourism zones and lot of see conflict is everywhere. Particularly the place where I am working in Maharashtra, which is conflict. I mean, even in even if you see in this in this lockdown, there are three three people got killed. It is have, there. And I, do you think lockdown has helped uh, since tourists are now no longer uh, going to the park? The lockdown definitely, definitely must have taught people now what to call no to treat this nature and the wildlife in a different way, which is the biggest mm-hmm. lesson I think people must have learned it. Uh, no, I mean it's one way it is good. I mean I don't know whether they're going to stop uh, trading of wildlife in China and stuff. That's a different case. But at least people realize something. I mean people must have realized there's something majorly they have done wrong to this nature to the wildlife. Which I hope they will at least ten percent or twenty percent people will realize it. There's always okay. they'll try to yeah. Coming on that, uh, what's the relation between like this uh, parks tourism? You know how how do you think government is playing? Do you think you know this has to be controlled because there's all sometimes allegation to too many tourists in the park, but on the other hand, the government is earning money from it. Which is put back into the park. So, what about that relation? 
No, I think it used to be there. The last two, three years, I think two years, when things are controlled because after this, uh, after this High Court and Supreme Court, uh, I mean rules and regulations. I mean whatever the whatever the rules, whatever the law. I think uh, they are limited. Uh, the numbers of tourists because it's all according to the, you know, what do you call space and you no, know, I'm I'm not very sure about it. But these numbers are limited now because it's all depends on the carrying capacity of the park. You no, know, as per the carrying capacity, these numbers are there. But it's all online now. Those things are not. Uh, I mean, I I mean it used to be maybe, but not now maybe. But that's a control but, thing. But one way, tourism hand, is also tourism also hand, helping. To, yeah, they tourism need also tourists to for money. The revenue, yeah, revenues are that definitely mm-hmm. helping to the locals and stuff. But I mean, this this all if I can say because I'm last 10, 15 years I'm I'm filming in national park. And nowadays I think these things are quite controlled apart from few places maybe. These one or two cases, but generally speaking, these on, to the online systems and there is some regulatory things that come. I mean, they are trying to increase the space and the carrying capacity according to the tourism flow. But uh, I think quite control. I think which is very important. One way it is there is always some some there's some sort of a monitoring is happening. Some sort of a monetary benefits also happening. Local peoples are getting revenue, and uh, I mean, it is good for. I mean, it's one way. It's, it's kind of a conservation, which you can say. Which I'm not against tourism. The controlled tourism and a regulated tourism is definitely good. And uh, I mean, I don't know what's happening in non-tourism zone, which I have no idea, which is not completely common. Tell me, tell me about your latest project. So, what is the film you are working on? I now? again, as usual, is my sixth film. I started uh, following a character called Maya. I most completed and, uh, it. I'm just you're shooting in Tadoba this time. I'm telling you, Tadoba. It's in Maya and Tadoba in Maharashtra. And uh, she lost uh, her first two liters with some strange reasons. So no one knows the reason. So I just thought, uh, let me follow her and find out the reason why she's not able to. You no, know, she she never succeeded as a, as a mother. You no, know, always when this comes to become a sub adult, she lose it. Uh, so I tried to follow her, find out the reason behind it. And I managed to get a completely different perspective of that, you know, uh, tiger character because of, you know, a lot of different sort of an influence. There's a lot of completely different reason uh, behind this loss, which she is, uh, was, she was going through. So it's a film about her and, uh, and again about, uh, about, I mean, she lives next to uh, in the core and next to that there's a buffer. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm trying to do a film of, Core and buffer and relationship between core and buffer and the moment of the tiger between core and buffer and that's what so I spent something around 200 days to uh, complete the film. I'm trying. I'm trying to put together. Maybe I maybe I may follow one more character. That's what I was following the buffer character. I lost. Uh, I lost continuity. So I don't know what I'm planning to. Do. I thought of doing a three-part series. So maybe I try to put together and make a bigger one. Uh, I'm still working. See, that's what. It's not. There's no solid plan. We start with something else, some, some sort of a basic uh, storyline, try to follow with four five story track, and try once once you got the story, we try to stick to that till we get that particular all the elements to put together. So this is again, you no, know, it's again it's a gamble. So, so you start with a story and sometimes you shift also. Oh yeah. Don't get, huh? yeah. Yeah, so many times. I mean, not don't get things changes. We we always, you know, in it's wild, you may not get uh, so for example, there's a film called Tiger Revenge. I wanted to follow it, a mother with tiger uh, three cups. We lost a mother after exactly after three months. Three cups become mm-hmm. orphan. So we just followed it, followed it and managed to get uh, find a story when the father was taking care of these three cups. So there's a new story started. So it's it's again a positive attitude. We we'll go every day and put our our savings and passion and time and everything in that story, and uh, without compromising uh, quality, and without uh, what you call. I don't do anything in free of cost. I mean, I always uh, put my savings and uh, pay proper money and try to I keep all my copyrights and go to international channel and pitch it and. If, you know, if there's a story, they buy it. If there's no story, then there's no buyer. So it's a purely, which you were, you were, you were what you call it, a positive yeah. attitude. Finally, uh, I have a lot of youngsters who come and say, how do we become a wildlife filmmaker? So what is your... See, I don't know whether, 
see end of the day i always say one needs to know the film language if you want to make a kind of a film which i make you no know, kind of there is there is language there is a storyline there is some there is a drama it is a proper film language shot with a professional technical cameras and with all that all the so called you know, specifications but uh, i mean now everyone thinks because of this dslr revolution because everything is auto because you just you know you, you see the view through a viewfinder you get the image that doesn't mean that you can become a wildlife filmmaker obviously there's a lot of difference between you know operating camera and creatively you know getting content from those same camera so uh, documentation is different making documentary proper documentary filmmaking is different so they need to change their attitude and they need to change the complete perspective of where they they are thinking about this filming they need to they need to learn that first it is not that just putting together visuals and putting a music and putting a voice over is wildlife filming nowadays i can see a lot of drone shots are coming obviously mm-hmm. anything if you see from top it looks good so doesn't mean that it's a great image they need to try to understand the story telling part and if they have a i mean kind of a digital ott platform which is coming there is i i am i, I think i strongly believe there's going to be a, a lot of demand for shorter story with good content and good storytelling uh, if you do it and there will be a demand so one one all everyone can try to learn that first with operating a camera is just a three days two days job there is no need to waste mm-hmm. money on online and you know and spending money you, you get to see them in everything in youtube and everything is available what sort of a setting and everything instead of wasting time uh, money on that might as well they should waste uh, you know spend time on mm-hmm. you know spending you no know, understanding the creative part of it and storytelling part of it yeah i mean so that actually yeah that's how your uh, life was you first became a filmmaker and then you became a wildlife filmmaker yeah yeah you? it's so it's, it's not that it's, yeah it's it's not that you know you just because you get image you become a wildlife filmmaker because i'm telling that i mean i i, I became a wild i'm i'm still i won't call myself as a wildlife filmmaker i'm still learning i'm still no i think i started making a film on on my own film only after 15 years of you no know, seeing i you no know, gone through kind of a thing like assistant cameraman yeah. and he became an associate cameraman then he became a segment cameraman and the segment a director process. and it's long and long and and then and, and now also it's not that i i'm investing my own money so it's it's very, it's, it's very, so the problem is i mean people, every, everyone always says sir why can't we we don't get commission from the channel it is easy you no know, they give a commission they give a money the minute the day you get the money they start dictating you i mean i mean i don't want to work i don't know, i want to tell a story the way i want to say, tell so i want to, i mean i do I, I, that that's the reason it's very difficult very easy to get money and work for them and put together a film and give it to them you you keep a profit margin and you can't call i don't think there is uh, there is i mean people won't remember those stories it's a compilation of shots and maybe some facebook and social media might say wow 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 it starts and ends there and that doesn't mean that you are a wildlife filmmaker and i mean even i am i'm still i mean now last 15 days i'm going back and seeing all my footage of last 15 years i'm still you see you know there's a lot of mistake when still i'm learning okay you no know, it's like if you going go back and see those footage you know the kind of a mistake which you do which is still i'm doing it but again if you put all the way i am work and put in an excel sheet and see that you no know, final time and you think it's it's it's, it's a stupidity what i am into it's, it's a completely a, you know stupid set of a i mean this if you put see the numbers oh. this is no i mean you know, I, i don't think people laugh at me no so it's all passion and now I, i like to do it i'm i like to do what i like to do so, I'm following you. So that's yeah. So thanks a lot. Thank you very much. And I think I'm no, sure it will enlighten our audience who uh, want to know about uh, wildlife filmmaking. And if you want to catch his films, watch NGC, watch uh, Discovery. There are we'll debating yeah. his films on that. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are in Hotstar, and you can see in YouTube, and definitely they can. Yeah. Watch so we'll catch that on these channels. Thank you so much for being with us. Welcome. Follow, Thank you very um, much, Ajay. And all, all of you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. 
Thanks, Nala. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.